Warning, the following presentation of this crime case is intended only for a mature audience. It's not suitable for the faint of heart. It may contain graphic bone chilling description of crime scenes or injuries, adult dialogue and strong language, assault, thoughts of suicide or self-harm, vengeful actions, violence, and repeated assault of minors. Very discretion is advised. Today's story is about an Egyptian serial killer. This one hits home for me because this happened in my country. The horrible criminal's full name was Ramadan Abdurrahim Mansour, also known as El Turbini. He was born in 1980 in the city of Tanta, Al Gharbiya district in Egypt. He was an Egyptian street gang leader and serial killer who assaulted and murdered at least 32 children in the course of seven years. Throughout several locations in Egypt, including Cairo, Alexandria, Kalyubeya, and Beni Suef, all of his victims were 10 to 14 years old. Most of them were boys. At the ripe age of 12, Ramadan left his home in Tanta, a town north of Cairo, to escape the poverty that his family was going through. Due to lack of money and education back in those days, a lot of parents became greedy and aloof. They showed no sympathy to each other and no sympathy even to their kids. These were the conditions that Ramadan was subjected to at a very early age. Mind you, I'm not justifying his actions by saying that he had a miserable childhood because what he did later on was heinous and I'm not trying to make anyone who is listening to me tell this story to feel that he was the victim in all of this although he was the victim at the beginning of his childhood. Now back to the story. Any records of him having any siblings aren't available so it's not clear if he did or didn't. If he did have blood relatives though They wouldn't want to be tied to his name in any way, due to the sinister actions that he did later on in life. After leaving his home, he started working at a cafeteria beside the train station to cover the expenses, but that didn't work out for too long. He soon after met a gang leader and criminal called Abdu El Turbini, a monster inside and out. Their meeting is the catalyst to the downfall of Ramadan. I just want to say that Ramadan took the name El Turbini from Abdu and that this is Ramadan's story although Abdu played a part in this. Ramadan was a prey to Abdu to say the least. He would always corner Ramadan, take his hard earned money, beat him to a bloody pulp and leave him with nothing after. Reminder, Ramadan was just 12 years old. One day. Young Ramadan had enough and stood up to his bully and said that he won't give him any of his money and that he wants every single pound that was taken from him back. Abdu agreed and asked the boy to follow him to the railway of the express train and told him that they will be climbing to the roof of one train cart and that's where he'll hand him his money back. Unfortunately, that wasn't what happened. Abdu lured the boy, then proceeded to defile and sexually assault Ramadan on top of that train roof, then tied him up and threw him down from the top of the train into the iron tracks. He didn't pass away. Instead, that caused serious injuries, including disfigurement of the face, which resulted in strabismus, also known as cross eyes and skull fracture too. Injuries to his abdominal area and left leg. He had to undergo several surgeries to survive those injuries. It's said that due to the impact of collision between his head and the iron tracks, he might have suffered from brain injury. Even though it's not confirmed, I personally believe that he did. Most serial killers share one common trait that is always present, and that is traumatic head injury. Ramadan spent one whole month in the hospital to cope with the trauma and let his wounds heal. 
Abdu, the perpetrator, was caught by the police for unknown charges. He was free after an unknown amount of time. Then he was killed in a car accident. I hate him. He's just disgusting. I just hate him. Let's move on. Ramadan was traumatized and humiliated by what was done to him. He had thought of suicide and attempted to proceed to act on these thoughts several times due to his inability to live with the shame of being a young, a young man who was defiled by another. Depression, nightmares, and PTSD haunted him for years and years. The suffering slowly warped his mind, plus his already fragile psyche resulted in a creation of a new monster. A monster similar to the one that hurt him and, called and caused all of his own suffering. A monster similar to Abdu. He felt angry and he wanted to take revenge. He thought that society and everyone was against him, ridiculing him and working against him for all his life. So he decided to take revenge and to hurt everyone that he set his eyes on. It didn't matter who was innocent or not. He was innocent and wronged. Everyone around him were also innocent, but he had already set his mind on hurting them the same exact way he was hurt. He joined the street gang soon after his release from the hospital. Gang leaders taught him skills of survival, allegedly cutting him with razors when he made any mistakes. According to his confession, Ramadan soon learned the method of getting back at those who crossed him by raping them and murdered anyone who threatened to go to the police afterwards. Ramadan frequently traveled between Cairo and Alexandria by train. He felt safer in Alexandria because it had fewer police officers. The vice department of Burg el Arab police station in Alexandria started keeping a profile on him during this time. He was leveling up in gang ranks and gaining minions of his own. They all had grotesque names and they were called Hanata which means brown skin. Swaysi, it means a person related to Suez. Bo'o, which means big mouth, also means snitch. And this trait will play a big part later. And al Ghazar. al Ghazar stands out to me because it's literally the mean, the word, the butcher. It means the butcher, but in Arabic. The minions usually lured street children and orphans, specifically because they had no power and no families to ask about their well-being or location. So if they disappeared or died, there will be no loose ends. They were lured with the promises of joining the gang or getting money onto the carriage roof of the trains, where they, where they then stripped, raped, and tortured them tied them with ropes, and tossed their naked bodies onto the trackside, dead or barely alive. They tossed them to the trackside's thinking that when the train starts moving, their bodies would be pulverized by the wheels and no evidence will be left behind. Ramadan enjoyed throwing them down the train himself. It was a turn-on for him. He would also cut pieces of their skin and flesh before he killed them and would consume it right before their eyes. He would lie to them and say that if they kiss his feet and beg hard enough, he would let them live and release them. He never did. Some of the children were dumped into the Great Nile River or buried alive. During the time that he was committing his crimes on the roof of the train, there were people in the train carts, sleeping, eating, or just socializing. Ramadan acquired that the nickname El Turbini, meaning Express Train, from his favorite location for the crimes. The Turbini was a Spanish express train that had an air conditioning generator in one of the carts, and that was his favorite location because of the loud noises coming from the machines. No one could hear anyone scream from that location. 
One night at 1 a.m., a homeless child called Muhammad Kamal went and took shelter in a train cart. It was his usual spot to hide from the cold of the night. Unfortunately, he encountered El Turbini and his accomplices. They caught him and El Turbini told them to assault the child one by one. And after they were all done, he told them to leave because it was his turn. He did the same disgusting action to the child several times, then grabbed a big rock and hit the child on the head with it several times until nothing was left. They later discarded of the body in the subway. Another one of the victims, 12-year-old boy Ahmed Nagy, had been a member of Ramadan's gang. When Ramadan tried to sexually assault him, Nagy reported him to the police after running away, and Ramadan was arrested but was released for lack of evidence. Turbini ordered his men to search everywhere until they found the boy. And when they did, they invited him to join them in a meeting at the train subway. And that's when he saw Turbini, and it's mentioned that the boy was so scared, his face was almost distorted in pain, because he knew what would happen next. Turbini saw the boy's reaction, and he laughed really loudly. His men said that they have never ever seen him laugh like that before. Soon after, Turbini and his men raped the boy for three hours straight until he bled out. They tied him up and they climbed a huge water tank that was three meters high, planning on throwing the child from the top. His minions felt bad and kept begging Turbini to stop and that it wasn't necessary to kill the boy in such a way and that they can finish him off the same way they did to all the other victims. But Il Turbini didn't care and disposed of the child by tossing him from the top of the water tank anyways. That was his retaliation to Ahmed Nagy according to the deduction of the prosecutors. His crimes continued for more than six years. He killed hundreds and hundreds of children. On a fateful day, a maintenance worker was checking on the rails by the subway and noticed the skeletal remains of a child. Days later, other skeletal remains were found by the train tracks of the Alexandria City Express, and another was found at the Tanta City train station. Police conducted a search and they found 12 remains around the same area. The police forces, government, and the Egyptian community were shook to the core. They put all their power to help during the search for the killers, identifying the remains and conducting the investigation all in all. Soon after, in 2006, the police found a shelter for homeless children and they arrested everyone, including a minion of the Turbini. His name was Ahmed Samir, also known as Bu'u. As I mentioned before, his nickname literally means snitch. Although the police didn't know that he was an accomplice and weren't even searching for any criminals when they took the people at the shelter into their custody, Bu'u decided to snitch and tell the police everything. If they give him complete immunity and safety from El Turbini. He said the names and locations of all the other minions. They were all caught one by one. El Turbini was soon caught after. They set a trap to catch him. After the arrest, Ramadan reportedly told prosecutors that he was possessed by a female jinn or a succubus who commanded him to commit the crimes. He was talking about his crimes in details and posting about it to everyone. He also said that he likes murdering 12-year-old boys most. Soon, he took the police to all the locations of the corpses by his own will. They found 17 corpses other than the 15 other ones that they previously found. 23 corpses 
were identified. The details disturbed the police officers. Some seeked therapy later due to the trauma of what they saw and heard. Here is a short video of the trial. During trials, as you can see in this video, young boys who were victims to Ramadan and his men came forward to testify to what happened to them. But the defense team were ready to strike them down by saying that there was no sufficient evidence available. The only evidence that they had were the words of a snitch and random corpses that can never be tied to the gang members. And although Ramadan confessed, his words were never taken as evidence due to his clear mental instability. The victims decided to take off all their clothes to show marks of their humiliation and wanted a forensics team to check them for evidence. They also said all the sexual humiliation and torture that they went through in great detail. They said that they were so humiliated before that even stripping naked in front of the judge and all the people present wasn't shameful anymore. They wanted to do anything to keep Turbini away from society. As soon as Turbini and his men arrived to jail before the trials, the other criminals who were already there have already learned about what he has done and why he was going to jail. And they decided to act on justice and they decided to torture Turbini and his men the same exact way he has tortured the children. It's very common um, act to do that in Egypt, especially when there are criminals together in, in jail. So I'm not even surprised that that happened to him and he very rightfully deserves it. Unfortunately, the, the defense team during the trial itself, he asked, they asked the, the criminals, the gang, Turbini and his men, to take off their clothes and show the signs of being tortured. And they took off their shirts and they were like, oh, look at us. We're being tortured. Someone is like trying to kill us in jail. This is a sign that we're innocent. And as a matter of fact, no one believed them. So yeah, that's it. That wasn't the only trick that the defense team tried to pull. They also asked the criminals to take off their clothes and show the signs of torture that they have experienced during their time in jail. They have been to jail for a few days before their trials or for a while before their trials as a matter of fact. After several trials, all the criminals came clean about what they have done. But turns out that the man called Al Ghazar, the butcher, never took part in raping torturing, killing, or disposing of the children. So, he took a much lesser sentence than the others. Ramadan Mansur al turbini was convicted and sentenced to death by the criminal court in Tanta in 2007. He was executed by hanging on Thursday morning, 16th of December, 2010. This concludes our story for today. Thank you so much for sticking out till the end. I will be also uploading more videos under a series called Arabian Serial Killers. Thank you. Please consider subscribing and commenting and liking if you like this video. See you soon.